when soil nutrient levels are at critical limits or above, we tend to see soybeans not respond as well as some of our other field crops. Um, especially with regards, when you start talking about uh, a potash application, for instance, um, what research at Michigan State and other land-grant universities has, for the most part, continued to show is that uh, a potash or potassium rate tends to play a much bigger role in soybean plant response as opposed to potash source or potash timing. So potassium is one of the more important nutrients uh, with regards to soybean production. A lot of people don't know that next to nitrogen, potassium is taken up in greater quantities than any other nutrient in the soybean plant. And how much potassium is actually taken up? You're looking at, on average, about 1.2 to 1.4 pounds of potash, or K2O, per bushel of soybean production. So the question often arises as to when should I apply my potash on soybean production? One of the general rules of thumb is if you're on a coarse textured or sandy based soil, uh, typically those have a cation exchange capacity of six or less. We do not recommend fall application of potash. And the primary reason is there is it tends to leach over the late fall, winter, and early spring season with late fall, uh, rainfall, spring rainfall, and then again, our winter snow melt. Um, outside of those coarse textured soils, again, that potassium rate tends to become much more important than the timing or source of application. A couple of things to remember as you consider a potash application on your soybean field. Uh, one would be uh, if you're below critical level, know what that critical level actually is. So that critical limit in soybean production especially is going to vary by your soil texture. And the general rule of thumb is 2.5 times your cation exchange capacity plus 75 equals that critical limit that you need to be at for soybean production and in general for a lot of our field crop production. If you're below that critical limit, you want to try to work to bring that uh, uh, soil test level up to critical or a little bit higher than that, that range. If you're at critical or maybe even a little higher, um, a good general rule of thumb is to have a potash application replace what will be removed by that soybean crop in that year of application. And again, usually about 1.2 to 1.4 pounds of K2O per bushel is that general rule of thumb of uh, potash removal. And that would be a good, good number to shoot for. A couple of other uh, useful notes. Um, if you're considering you have multiple fields, which should I apply my potash to first? Typically start with that lower testing field, take care of those fields first, and then go to those fields that might be at critical or above critical limits. Another important aspect to remember with potash application and soybean production, when you, when you want to replace the amount of potash that's removed by that crop, a good rule of thumb is to also have a realistic yield goal. Oftentimes, uh, many producers may not have a realistic yield goal. And you, you might be asking yourself, what is a realistic yield goal that I should shoot for? A realistic yield goal should be achievable in one of two years. So if you're consistently shooting for 100 bushel to the acre and you never achieve it, it probably likely is not a realistic yield goal and you should downgrade uh, your yield goal for that specific field. Um, another point to remember is that you need to account for those good and those bad years. Oftentimes when we fertilize at a certain yield goal and we exceed that yield goal, let's say 10, 15, 20 bushels to the acre, we have to account for that extra potash removal from the field. We can do that the following season, the fall, the spring after, etc. But you have to account for that extra potash removal.